think it's about time so we should uh, we shall start so uh, a very good evening everyone from japan and uh, good afternoon to everyone from uh, india and uh, other uh, south asian countries uh, so thank you for joining today's webinar my name is Swapnil Charasya, and uh, I'll be facilitating today's webinar. Uh, I'm a master's student at uh, Department of Civil Engineering at University of Tokyo. So today's webinar is about study and work in Japan. Study and work in Japan uh, is the project uh, aim, which aims to uh, promote education in Japan by motivating young students to choose Japan as a preferred destination for future studies. A series of webinars is being organized under this project. Uh, in which we'll have presentations by experts from different universities across Japan who will be providing you information and guidance on admission process and various English programs being offered. So Japan, even after being the third largest economy with the highest employment rate among the developed G7 nation, is not a very popular country for higher education. This is mainly due to lack of information and various misconceptions like Japanese language requirements, living costs, lifestyles, job prospects, etc. So during the webinar, most of these questions will be answered. If you have any further questions, please put them down in the Q&A portal at the bottom of your screen. Today's webinar, as you can see in the agenda slide shared, uh, is scheduled for two hours. Uh, we will first have introduction by Mr. Miyauchi, director at the University of Tokyo India office, followed by the presentation on overview of study and work in Japan by Ms. Rubina. We will then have presentations from different uh, universities, uh, namely Kyoto University, University of Aizu, and Keio University. Total presentation time for each university is 20 minutes, which will be followed by a five minutes of Q&A session, which will be answered by the university speakers. I would also request all the presenters and panelists to please keep your audio and video off when you are not presenting. So without any further delay, I would like to invite Mr. Miyauchi, director of the University of Tokyo India office to share his thoughts on today's webinar. Thank you, uh, Spaniard. Yeah. There are uh, student parents in seven countries India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. My name is Yasuki Miyauchi, the director of the University of Tokyo in the office. It is my pleasure to uh, uh, present the, today's webinar. The study and work in Japan, it is uh, sponsored by MEXT. Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and uh, Technology in Japan. Our mission is to introduce Japanese university and assist you study and work in Japan. This project started from uh, last year, October. And in total, uh, 12 sessions we cover. And uh, we'll uh, plan to the 30 major universities in Japan, very part of Japan private universities, public universities, and national universities, both graduate and undergraduate schools. Therefore, you can have familiar with the Japanese uh, university today if you participate in many sessions. Of course, 20 minutes uh, presentation is not enough. But in such case, please contact university directly. You can get good answer from them, I'm sure. They are waiting for your direct contact. Also today, I'd like to appeal that many Japanese school is now opening a door to English-speaking students. English medium program is now common in Japanese universities. In uh, graduate school, it is very common. Also, your undergraduate school is now taking the, on the way. And uh, many uh, undergraduate school is now open the door to English-speaking students. Even in high school, some of them started uh, such program. I try to encourage all students in southern uh, uh, seven countries. Please go to come to Japan. We try to uh, await your uh, uh, good participation and uh, joining us. I believe this program will really help you. And then uh, it is my great pleasure if you consider 
some Japanese university as your future option. Anyhow, please enjoy today's session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyoshi, for your valuable insights and your words are really motivational. And uh, it's great to know that Japan is moving forward towards providing English education uh, for foreign students as well. So next we have Ms. Rubina uh, to give an overview on the study and work in Japan project. So I would uh, hand over the mic to Ms. Rubina. Thank you, Mr. Swapni. Hello, everyone. I welcome you all for today's webinar, Study and Work in Japan. I'm Rubina, and currently I'm a PhD student in the Department of Bioengineering at the University of Tokyo. Now I will share my presentation with you all. Why Japan? Japan has population of 126 million with 47 prefectures. Japan is the, has the third largest economy in the world and a member of G7 countries. The economy of the Japan is driven by various major industries such as automobile manufacturing, electronics industries and robotics and alike. If it comes to the safety of the country, Japan is ranked ninth in top 10 countries in the world according to Global Peace Index. You will have a perfect life here with smooth public transportation, which is always on time. Japan also provides very good health insurance policy to the students with only 12,000 yen per year. Other than that, you can enjoy various food, not only from Japan, but also different cuisines from throughout the world, such as Thai food, Italian, Spanish, and etc. Japanese universities provide various English courses as mentioned by Mr. Miyauchi. There are three different types of Japanese universities, such as national, which are founded by Japanese government throughout the country, public in prefectures, which are laid by local public entities and private universities, which are founded by the founders. All of them provide excellent education system to the students. There are various English courses offered by various Japanese universities for undergraduate programs, 90 English courses are offered by 40 universities. For masters, we have 160 courses offered by 51 universities. And for doctoral, the duration of course is three to four years, which the language of instruction depends on the supervisor, mainly the English speaking people or the foreign students who come to Japan can offer English doctoral courses. Japanese universities also provide world-class infrastructure to the students with well-equipped library, research labs, and student lounges. Other than that, they also provide students dormitory to the students, and also you can enjoy sports facility here. Moving on, admission to Japanese universities for various courses such as bachelors can be entered through two ways, which is common entrance exam and also different programs which are taught in English by offered by the universities such as PEAK and ally. For masters and PhD courses, one important point is to contact your supervisor and follow the rest of the proceedings according to the guidelines shared by their department and also by the university. There are various financial assistance provided by the universities as well as Japanese government. If you compare the tuition fees and living expenses in Japan and United States, you will see the tuition fees for public universities in US is around 22 lakhs and only four lakhs in Japan. For private, the annual tuition fees for Japan is only 12 lakhs and 37 lakhs in United States. For the living expenses, it is almost the same. 
there are various op job opportunity opportunities you can find in Japan after graduation. The average salary is around 3.9 million yen per year when a bachelor student graduates. Because Japan has lowest unemployment rate, according to Statista 2020, which showed that only 2.34% is the um, unemployment rate. You can apply for your job opportunities in Japanese, Japanese companies, such as Toyota, Suzuki, Canon, which are famous worldwide. And also you have option to apply for job in other global companies which is operating in which are operating in Japan, such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, etc. Important note is to mention here that the visa procurement is a very easy process where the student can upgrade the visa from student visa to working visa by staying in Japan and not going returning to the home country. Here are some life, my life here in Japan, where you can have healthy balance between personal life and academic life. With that, I will conclude my presentation today and I'll hand it over the mic to Mr. Swapnil to continue with the webinar. Thank you for joining us and hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rubina, for such an interest, interesting presentation. And uh, you shed light into so many interesting and unique aspects that are not very uh, commonly discussed uh, in common uh, discussion topics. So that's very interesting, especially about uh, the job prospects, the visa transitions, and also sharing about your personal experience. Thank you for uh, doing that. Uh, next, uh, we now have presentations uh, by universities. So first I will share again the agenda slide. Um, so as we can see in the flow of the event, uh, we, our first presentation is by Kyoto University. Kyoto University has been constantly featuring among the top three universities in Japan. Kyoto University has generated five prime ministers of Japan to date and is also famed for producing world-class researchers, including many Nobel laureates. Uh, from Kyoto University, we are joined by Mr. Satoshi Kubo, Section Chief, International Education and Student Mobility Division. I request Mr. Satoshi to please take over the proceedings. Thank you, Mr. Sapnil, for your kind introduction. Hello, everyone. I am Satoshi Kubo from the International Student and uh, International Education and Student Mobility Division from Kyoto University. And let me introduce Ms. Shiho Tajima. Uh, an international study abroad coordinator from same department. In this session, we will give a presentation about our university overview, admission, and scholarship. Okay, let us begin. Let's just start with uh, the overview of our university. Kyoto University was established in 1897 as the second oldest national university and a leading university in Japan. From founded to present, Kyoto University's policy is freedom of academic culture. It means that an independence and interactive learning are needed for education and a free thinking is needed for research. Under this policy, Kyoto University, known as the top reading research university in Japan. But our reputation is not limited within a country. Kyoto University is one of the best university in the world and ranked high level in various world university rankings. And our faculty, faculty awarded 11 Nobel Prize in past due to their free, original, unique, and creative thinking based on our policy, academic freedom. So you can see that there are opportunities to run directly from the world's top level researchers in Kyoto University. This time, uh, let's go to see the campuses and facilities. 
Kyoto University has three campuses across the border Kyoto city area. And there are 44 off-campus research and educational facilities in Japan. And uh, 61 offices and facilities abroad. Students have the choice of engaging with the field research. Then we'd like to explain Kyoto City, where the city, our main campus located. Kyoto is an ancient capital city, which remains as a capital, a cultural heart of the country. Nearly 7.5 million tourists visited Kyoto from abroad per a year. Because Kyoto has different kinds of rituals and festivals. You can see the beauty of Japanese traditions everywhere. And there are more than 2,000 temples and shrines, including 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Kyoto. At the same time, Kyoto is a modern city with many global companies, such as Nintendo, a famous game company. I think uh, everyone knows Nintendo game character, such as Super Mario Brothers, Pikachu, and Link from Legend of Zelda, and so on. Also, Kyoto is known as a student-friendly city. There are over 30 universities, and around 10% of the population is college students. So there is everything that students need. Kyoto University has 22,596 students, including 2,715 international students from 100 17 countries standing, uh, studying our campuses. And more than 700 faculty and staff members. It takes four years to complete an undergraduate course for most divisions. And there are two study tracks in the graduate schools. A master's course of two years of study and a doctor course of three years. Furthermore, there are a five year doctor course which consists of two parts the two years, two year first part equivalent to master course and a three year upper course. In Kyoto University, we offer a wide range of study area under 10 undergraduates and 18 graduate graduate schools. Also, Japanese is used as a basic language in most programs, but uh, we also have English medium programs where students are taught entirely in English. Here is a list of those programs available in English that are taught and assessed entirely in English. And support service are uh, also provided in English. For the undergraduate program, the only program we have is civil engineering. This is a four-year program leading to Bachelor of Engineering. The program aims students to learn to design and manage civil infra infra infrastructure while considering global environmental issues in urban and regional areas, particularly in Asian and African countries. The university also has a special international undergraduate program for international students called Kyoto IAP. This is a four and a half year program which enables students to run Japanese and obtain the bachelor degree at the undergraduate school of their choice. As Japanese training will be provided through the program. So uh, no Japanese language ability is required 
to begin with. Students under this program will receive full scholarship. Next is about graduate studies. As for graduate studies, various area, study areas are available in English from social sciences to engineering and bio studies. We also offer three joint or double degree programs for graduate studies. The programs in management with Cornell University in the United States, the in international collaborate program in genomic medicine with McGill University in Canada, and the program in transcultural studies with Heidelberg University in Germany. These joint or double degree programs provide students with opportunities for higher level studies of great value that would not be available from a single university. Since Kyoto University is a national university, tuition fees are relatively reasonable. There is no difference in fees between international students and the local students. Tuition for regular students are about uh, 377,000 Indian rupees per year. And regular students with excellent academic records who have financial difficulty may be eligible for a full or a half tuition exemption. Average living cost in Kyoto is around 60,000 Indian rupees per, per month, including accommodation fee. For your information, uh, we have seven dorms for international students. As for the financial aid, a wide, wide variety of scholarships are available to study at Kyoto University. First one is Japanese government scholarship, as known as MEXT scholarship. Most of the MEXT scholarship students at Kyoto University receive the scholarship through embassy recommendation scheme, which you apply through a Japanese embassy or consulate in your home country. And the other way to be a MECT scholar is university recommendation. To apply for a university recommendation, contact the, contact the faculty member that you would like to have as a, your uh, academic advisor and ask, ask that person for assistance. Next is about uh, JASO scholarship. It provides about 33,000 Indian rupees per month. The applications are accepted only after enrollment and is available only for the designated graduate programs. Lastly, it's a private foundation scholarship. Kyoto University annually selects and nominates candidates for around 60 foundations. Each foundation typically selects one or two students and provides around 21,000 to 130,000 Indian rupees per month. For example, there is Asian Future Leader Scholarship Program operated by Kyoto University. This is a full scholarship program for master degree seeking student. The eligibilities are citizenship of an Asian country, expecting to enroll in a master degree program in Kyoto University and completed a bachelor degree at, the, at one of the designated institutions. For your information, the specified institution in India are 
India Institute of Technology, Bombay, IITV, India Institute of Science, and Jawaharlal Nehru University. For more details, please visit our website. Finally, let us explain the application guideline. Each program has independent application process and application details vary depending on the program. For instance, some pro programs start in April, some in October, and some in both. So please visit the program web website for your interest and find the information. For graduate programs, you will find the link from our main website. If you prefer to look for a potential, potential supervisor first, you can search the graduate school website or our researcher database available from the university website. For some programs, you may have to take the entrance exam on our campus mean in Japan. In such cases, many international students choose to enroll as a research student first. Research student is a non-degree seeking status, which enables students to prepare under the supervisor's guidance in Japan before taking the actual admission exam. So first of all, please have a look at the program website of your interest and confirm the necessary information. Okay, uh, this is the end of our presentation. We hope you could find any information, uh, information useful. Okay, thank you, Swapnil. Thank you very much, Mr. Satoshi, for your uh, comprehensive uh, uh, presentation. And thank you for sharing a very concise information about all the English education and admission programs that are available in Kyoto University. I'm sure many students will uh, find a lot of inf uh, helpful information in your presentation. So uh, there are some questions that we are constantly getting from the uh, students in the Q&A portal. Uh, so, Mr. Satoshi, would you like to answer some of those questions verbally? Um, there are some answered questions uh, that we have, uh, all the panelists are uh, continuously answering. So, some of the questions we can answer verbally. So, I can choose a few questions that I think uh, we can discuss uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the webinar. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, there's one question by uh, Mr. Sa uh, Sandilya, looking for master's program in chemical engineering. Yeah. Uh, so what is the process? So I think... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have... Uh, you have covered this one. <laughs> <laughs> Lot of questions. Uh, yes, uh, we have chemical engineering department in uh, graduate school of science. Uh, we have a uh, uh, master degree uh, status and a uh, doctor degree status for chemical engineering. And also uh, we provide a bachelor degree status and which, uh, well, <laughs> I <laughs> think uh, on, it's, yes, yes. <laughs> it depends on the, uh, which uh, graduate school you enroll and uh, so I'm sorry, but uh, please uh, visit our website. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, in, uh, yeah. Uh, there are some questions which are which we can discuss. Like, uh, if uh, I need to follow master's course first and then move to PhD, is there any age limit to apply for master's degree program? So, is there any age limit in master's degree in uh, University of uh, Kyoto University? No, there is no age limit for the, is to enter master or PhD. But some uh, scholarship program have uh, age limit, uh, like a uh, max scholarship. I think uh, 35 
all year is a maximum age limit for ma uh, doctor degree student, I think. Okay, uh, there's one more question I would like to discuss. Uh, like, um, uh, what is the selection criteria for Kyoto University in general, like SAT score or S SATs or other English language requirements? So uh, is there in general uh, examination, international examination that is a prerequisite for admissions? Yes. Uh, uh, for it depends on the program, but uh, uh, as for the Kyoto IA program, I uh, mentioned in the undergraduate program in English, it's a, uh, they have the border in the SAT. No, they, they, they don't, doesn't have a border. <laughs> Just take a, SAT uh, or the EJU or uh, International Baccalaureate, but I think uh, the they need uh, English uh, pre proficiency in, in uh, have the border. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry for waiting. Ah. For your reference, uh, TOEFL IBT is uh, 90 point. Uh, IS academic is uh, 6.5. And uh, Cambridge English score is 180 is a uh, border for uh, IAP program. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Satoshi. I'm sure uh, if students know about uh, the admission process and the various programs, they can definitely search about these requirements uh, on the website. So it is very good that you have shared all this information and uh, students can definitely search for their particular answers. And I would also like to add that the recordings of these webinars are also available in the University of Tokyo India office website. So if the students want to see the recordings for getting the information, uh, they can also do that. And uh, I would also request uh, Mr. Satoshi, if uh, you can uh, put some of the, if you want to share some of the links uh, to the students, you can share them in the chat box so that students can have access to the links. Okay, I do it. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Satoshi, for your uh, help uh, and uh, for your coordination. And uh, I think we should move on with the, our next presentation. So uh, again, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Satoshi. Uh, so next, uh, we have a presentation by University of Aizu. So uh, University of Aizu is a, very, uh, is a relatively new university and it is the first university in Japan solely dedicated to computers, computer science and engineering. University of Aizu is an emerging young university globally earning its name in the field of computer science and engineering and research in the field. Uh, from University of Aizu, we have Ms. Yungui Zhou uh, from Promotion Office for Super Global University. So I would hand over the mic to Ms. Zhou. Hello. Okay. First, I will share my screen. Okay. Can you see my slides? Uh, yes, we can see your slides. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Ying Hui Zhou. I'm from the uh, promotion office of top global university of the University of Eyes. I'm very glad to meet you here to tell you a, li a little bit more about our university in the following slides. So from this page, you can see that the name of our university is the University of Eyes. Eyes is, is our city's name. So we are one of the top global universities in Japan, selected by uh, Japan government in 2014. 
Okay. In Japan, there are totally about uh, 781 universities with three types. There are um, national university, public university, and private university. So the University of Aizu is one of the uh, 91 public universities, that mean, uh, which means it's publicly uh, funded by prefectural uh, government. The, our university uh, was established in 1993 as the first university in Japan dedicated to computer science and engineering. So our mission is to foster experts in computer science and engineering who are able to be active in the world. So from the start, it has been a very unique university because about 40% of our faculty members are non-Japanese from the... Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, from uh, different countries uh, all around the world. Okay. Excuse me, there's something wrong about this screen. Okay. Sorry, can you not control my screen? Okay. <clears throat> there are features of our university. Um, we we locate in a safe place of the uh, Aizu Wakamatsu with the interesting uh, culture, and we provide advanced education, and we have global environment, and we are cost effective. So I've introduced uh, Ms. this. Uh, yeah. Ms. sorry for uh, inter uh, intercepting. Uh, your screen is not visible. Your uh, presentation, yes, we I, cannot I see. That. Right okay, let me sh share again. Can you minimize your, uh, uh, I think, uh, your web browser? Uh, so yeah, yeah. Maybe your presentation is underneath the web browser. Um, maybe other, other user is sharing his screen now. It says uh, we're seeing uh, Mr. Yoshino's screen, not not the Ms. Joe's screen. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, uh, Mr. Yoshino, can you please stop sharing your screen? Ah, thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Obi, you can please share the screen again. Sorry for the troubles. Okay, please give me the priority of uh, to share my screen. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, then let's, okay. May I start in this page, from this page? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, so from start, it has been very unique university because 40% of, of our uh, faculty members are non-Japanese from different country around the world. So everything on campus is bilingual and you can take all courses entirely in English in any graduate school and graduate school. And you can get full support from our staff entirely in English. So there's the features of a university. So we, lo we, are, uh, we located in the safe city with an interesting culture and we provide advanced uh, um, education. We have global environment and we are cost effective. So um, our university is located in a historical city of Aizu Wakamatsu, surrounded by splendid na uh, nature. So it's a safe uh, place to live and very beautiful. So there are four seasons that you can see the the cherry blossoms in front of the castle in spring. So you can see the, the fall's largest lake and you can see the autumn leaves and you can enjoy ski in winter. Um, Aizu Wakamatsu is nicknamed as Samurai City. There is rich history, delicious food, interesting cultural traditions, festivals, and so on. 
Um, although we are a young university, we are already highly ranked out of more than um, 700 universities considering by Times Higher Education of uh, 2020 World University Ranking, we rank 24th in Japan. Um, although we are a small university, we have the largest computer science department in Japan and many uh, advanced fields like system design, robotics, AI, IoT, big data, biomedical, arts, network, and uh, embedded system, and so on. So we have advanced the curriculum that follows the world's uh, standards of ACM and the IEEE computer science curricula. So after taking the uh, um, fundamental courses in the fir first and second years, students choose a special field for their uh, third and fourth years. Uh, we have five fields, computer science, computer systems, computer network systems, applied information technologies, and software engineering. So um, from the third year, you can choose uh, um, a lab to start your um, research with a supervisor. Um, the start of the learning environment is high tech. So there are around uh, 3000 computer terminals on campus. That means one student can use 2.5 computers and most of them are available 24 hours, seven days. And all machines are replaced every three years, including the software and hardware to keep the high level of the whole total system. Also the student faculty ratio at this uh, university um, is less than 10 to one. It's, uh, it's, it's much better than the Japan, uh, Japanese average over 20 to one. So that means you have you will have good access to our professors. You can get much support in study and in life from our professors. So um, there are lots of cutting edge researchers in this university such as robotics and space are big topics here. Uh, so our, um, it's some wearable computing, um, speech recognition and image processing and biomedical information and so on. We also have advanced programs to help you experience uh, March such as uh, there are, there are um, various class projects, there are uh, venture startup factories and there are programming instruction for uh, competitions. So many things can help you to improve your skills and add your knowledge in computer science and engineering. So um, very few Japanese universities have programs that's taught entirely in English. The University of Aizu is one of them. So all the lectures and research instructions are conduct conducted entirely in English. And you can get um, also get living support by our staff entirely in English. Even for Japanese students, they need to com uh, complete their thesis in English and make presentation in English. Also, you are also giving the classes to learn Japanese from beginning level to business level. So, which is useful for daily life and also beneficial for your future employment after graduation. Um, in our short history, we had formal agreements with about 100 partner universities and institutions in many countries around the world. Not only we send students to these uh, universities and institutions, but our professors um, have the uh, collaboration with these universities in education and research. Also, we have some special programs um, like two plus two, the zero degree, master one by one, and three plus two programs. And the way uh, to attract um, overseas uh, university students uh, from their home univers university transfer to our university. Also, we are doing combined bachelor and master degrees in five years instead of a general six. 
many of uh, our students, both Japanese students and international students, go to uh, go on internships in companies around the world. We also have our own office in Silicon Valley, where uh, some students visit every year. And finally, I will talk about that so we are a very cost-effective university because we are a public university. So our tuition is much cheaper than many universities around the world. It's less than $5,000 per year. And um, cost of living is very reasonable. That's uh, less than $7,000 per year. And many students received a scholarship from Japanese government, from this uh, uh, local uh, associations. So um, we also provide rich support to international students, including the class mentor system that uh, the, our faculty members and the, support and the staff support your study and life from, from your environment. And uh, we have buddy program that the Japanese students become your buddy to help you adapt, adapt to the uh, Japanese life soon. Also, we have the robust uh, um, career support to help you to do the job hunting. So you can see from this table that our uh, um, employment rate is around 100%. We uh, have the beautiful campus and good facilities, are pro uh, including the on-campus dormitory, cafeteria, gym room, and swimming pool. So you can enjoy sports in the university. Uh, finally, I will talk about the how to apply. So we, we invite you to apply for the admission for this University of Eyes. We know you won't disappoint it. So the details about uh, uh, you, you, of course, you can check this a website from, uh, uh, you can check our website for details. But we will tell you that uh, we have two rounds, you, you will have two rounds of application opportunities in mid-October and mid-March. The element date is October 1st. And you should prepare some documents. So the most important um, document is one is uh, English proficiency. You need to submit some like uh, English proficiency like uh, TOEFL, IELTS, and um, um, TOEIC. And also you need to submit some automatic scores like SAT, ACT, and uh, class uh, trial examinations from C CBSC boards, CISC boards, and so on, and some state boards. Um, also you need to uh, prepare some your, your school's transcripts and uh, letter of uh, recommendation and so on. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us to send email to sgu-admission at mark u-is.ac.jp. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Please join us and start your safe, advanced, global, and cost-effective campus life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Zhou, for your uh, presentation, for such a comprehensive presentation and sharing about the whole admission process and the various uh, educational programs uh, that are being offered by University of Aizu. Uh, so uh, there are some uh, questions. Uh, I think uh, there are many questions, so we'll have to choose uh, one, a few which are pertaining to University of Aizu. Uh, so there, uh, there is one question which I can put as a, in general. For uh, for example, one student has asked that uh, uh, for uh, for graduate students, is it possible to again take admissions in undergraduate courses? Uh, do you mean this uh, it, graduate school? Study uh, in for, graduate uh, school. Uh, yes. Uh, so someone has done graduation in some other co uh, in, in other subject. He wants to change and restart with undergraduate course. So is it possible to do that? Uh, to re uh, to again start undergraduate school after, even after completing undergraduate in some other course? Yeah, sure. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so there are some questions like English proficiency that you have already answered in your uh, presentation. 
Uh, yes, so, the, yes. In the graduate school, this English proficiency is needed. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, the list of uh, English language proficiency exams are already shared in the presentation. Uh, so I would like to request students to please uh, also go through the presentations again. And uh, is there any GPA requirements uh, for uh, admissions? Minimum oh, GPA requirements? No, there's no GPA requirement. But also, there's no cutoff for SAT. But we required SAT subject test scores. So, uh, SAT subject, uh, mathematics level two, and science. Science means it's uh, physics, physics or chemical and or biometry. And uh, okay. there's no cutoff. And, uh, but, are there any individual? Yes. Okay. Okay. So there is no cutoff for SAT um, uh, subjects, a uh, subject test, but at least uh, a higher than average will be considered. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, one more question that I can see from the students uh, commonly, is there any admission test that students have to take for getting admission? Uh, excuse uh -huh. me? Uh, is there any common examination that should uh, for, uh, admission uh, examination of the university independent uh, universities independent examination there no there's no common examination okay so i think uh, these are the questions i uh, that we can answer so that's all from university of aizu so i think we should move on uh, with the next university now so i'll share again the agenda slide so as we can see now, our next university is, uh, okay, sorry, yeah. So as you can see from the agenda slide, uh, now we are going to have the presentation by K University. So K University is uh, one of the top private universities in Japan. Its history dates back to 1858 when it was first established as a school of Western studies. It is one of the only two Japanese universities to be a member of World Economic Forum's Global University Forum. And uh, its list of alumni and faculties uh, include three former prime ministers and many CEOs of the top Japanese companies. Uh, from K University, we are joined by Professor Rodney Von Metter and Mr. Shah from the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. Uh, so I would like to request Mr. Uh, Professor Rodney to please take over the proceedings. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you all this evening. It would be nice to be doing this in person, but you know we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it online, and at least uh, we all get something out of it this way. Let me see. Should be sharing my screen coming up there. Yeah, we can see the screen. Thank you, Professor. There we go. So um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I am Professor Rodney Van Meter, and we have with us today uh, Shaime Shah. Shaime, say hi. Oh, yeah, hi. So Shaime is one of our uh, current undergraduates, and I'm going to ask him to contribute as we go. And we also have uh, Mr. Mina Molto with us, who is from our uh, campus uh, international office. Mina Molto san, are you uh, online? Yes, I'm now here. Nice okay, to meet good. You. Thanks. So we'll be doing your, your uh, I'll be doing most of the talking here, but, but uh, Shai May is going to contribute in some, and Mina Molta sounds here to answer uh, questions as we go. So this is my research group. Um, I work with a lot of undergraduates as well as with uh, graduate students. So I understand that there are some people here this evening who are interested in uh, graduate studies and some who are interested in undergraduate studies. Mostly, I'm going to talk about the undergraduate studies, but you can ask us questions about the graduate studies as well, because we also, of course, have lots of uh, graduate programs available to, uh, to uh, anybody who's in interested. So this is my research group. Most of these people in the photo are undergraduates. They come and join our research groups, usually starting in their second year as undergraduates. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So obviously, that's me right there. And then if you have really good eyes, you might have noticed that that's Shai Mei there behind us. Uh, so Shai Mei was actually in my group for, for, uh, 
one semester, but he's actually switched and is now working in, in the group of, of a different professor. Um, Shaime, why don't you introduce yourself real quick and tell us whose group you're in? What they're oh, doing. yeah, sure. Um, so hi, I'm Shaime. I'm a third year undergraduate student in the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies, which you will soon learn that it's just a blanket term that encompasses a lot of things. And um, while I'm also the president of the Association for International Students at um, KO, University of Shona Fujisawa campus. And just a little bit about my background, so um, everyone's just familiar that um, I was born in India, in Ahmedabad, and I lived in Bangalore for four years. And then I moved to Tokyo for four years um, from the ages of four to eight. And then I moved back to India to Gurgaon. And then in high school, I studied in the IB program. So if you have any questions about that, and then I applied to KO and here I am. And whose research group are you in now? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm currently in uh, Kotosaka Sensei's research group, which is a, a, well, a management theory research group. But, well, I'll talk about my research a bit later, I guess, when we get, get, get to it. Great. Thanks. So, as um, was mentioned in the introduction, Keio is an old university in, in Japanese terms. It's the oldest institution of higher learning in Japan. But our campus, the Shonan Fujisawa campus, was actually founded in 1990. And part of the reason it was founded is to get away from the very narrowly siloed organization, where if you're in the Department of Economics, economics is the only thing you study. And if you're in chemistry, then chemistry is the only thing you study. Instead, what we are interested in at SFC is really when I have only 30 seconds or something to explain it to people, I explain it as. We are interested in, in how we can apply technology to solving society's problems. So we are working on new technologies, including some really leading edge technologies. My own research area is quantum computing and quantum networking, quantum internet, which we'll talk about a little bit in, in uh, just a few minutes. But the core part of SFC is really about how society and technology come together. And we study these things in, in an interdisciplinary fashion. So you know, Shaime is a good example. He was in my research group working on quantum computing for one, uh, for one semester. And he's now in a group that's working on business management. Other groups are on um, social innovation and governance and politics and many other things. We'll talk about that as we go. So here's an example. Let's talk about self-driving cars, which is a popular technology that a lot of people are working on, a lot of companies and a lot of universities are working on these days. Obviously, there are a lot of technologies that go into creating an autonomous vehicle. So there's the basic information technology, and you need things like GPS and GIS, which is global information systems. You need image recognition systems and AI, and you need networking and communications and entertainment. So let's say you're driving down the street somewhere and in your autonomous vehicle, you might think that this is a technological problem, but you know, perhaps something happens like an accident happens, um, your car hits someone. Now it's not only an issue for you personally, but it's also an issue for society as a whole. How do traffic laws change as we go from human drivers to autonomous vehicles? How do insurance policies change? How does the economics of the university of um, <clears throat> the entire industry change. Um, do we need fewer cars, or or uh, can we share cars more effectively? For example, when we're talking about these kinds of things, road design, city design, marketing, all of these kinds of issues are how technology actually influences society, and this is the kind of thing that we're working on at SFC. So you'll find professors who are working on. Basically, almost every one of the topics that are actually listed here on this slide. So I mentioned already that our uh, students join our research groups as sophomore undergraduates, as second year undergraduates, typically. This is another one of our uh, former students from uh, India, Rohan, who was working on internet governance, and in particular, how, how uh, the internet, how internet governance is um, affected throughout uh, Asia, and in particular, of course, since, since he was from India, he was interested in the two countries of India and Japan and how they can participate in the overall issues of how the internet, not only the technology, but legal implications and business uh, contracts and everything else, how it all works in sort of a global um, level. So 
our campus is the Shonan Fujisawa campus. As I've already said, it was founded in 1990. It was the first place in Japan to really be connected to the modern internet. Um, and there's a, a nice little view of the uh, pond on our campus. At SFC, there are two undergraduate faculties. Keio has a total of, uh, I think, 14 undergraduate uh, faculties spread across six major campuses, including medicine and pharmacy and nursing and things like that. But the two that are, are at our campus that offer undergraduate programs in English are the Faculty of Policy Management and um, the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. As Shaimei already mentioned, these are both very sort of interdisciplinary topics and um, they cover sort of a broad range of things from bioinformatics and, uh, and biological technology to internet and quantum computing and history and everything else. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. So if you want to apply to be an undergraduate at our, at our campus, you would apply to one of these faculties. And it really doesn't make very much of a difference which one you apply to. The professors in the two faculties are somewhat different, but there's actually also a lot of overlap in the middle. And as far as the students are concerned, the graduation requirements are the same. The, uh, the admissions procedure is the same. And um, it's only a matter of sort of which way you see yourself, what type of person you see yourself as. But it's not even uncommon for students from policy management, which sounds like this government and business oriented sort of thing to actually come and be members of uh, my own research group on quantum networking. So you know, it's from the student's point of view, the, the difference is not is not very substantial. <clears throat> um, there is a third major undergraduate program um, available in English at KO, which I don't have in my set of slides here today, but it's called the Pearl program. And that's the, uh, the economics uh, program. And um, you can get a separate presentation on that uh, sometime if you're interested. That's housed at a different campus from where the three of us who are here today are, are from. So the GIGA program, GIGA stands for the Global Information and Governance Academic Program. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's sort of the overall structure of what your four years as an undergraduate would be like. You'll take some number of classes in fundamental topics and some number in advanced topics, but then you'll join a professor's research group and you'll actually execute increasingly sophisticated projects as you go on that, negotiated between you and, and the faculty members. And ultimately this all caps in a graduation project or a graduation thesis. And we are literally in the depths of, <clears throat> of that season right now. The, uh, for students who start in April and graduate in March, their, their uh, theses are due basically in another couple of weeks. And so I'm supervising a couple of my own students that way. Um, for this GIGA program though, though uh, admissions are done, applications are done about now and admissions in the spring and you would, and you would come um, join us as a student in the fall in the September. So that also works. Um, you know, I tell incoming students that they should expect by the time that they graduate that about 25% of their total units toward graduation will come out of the research group, the Kinkyu Kai or the Zem seminar or Zemi or whatever um, your, your professor chooses to call it. Um, about 25% of your units will come out of that Kinkyu Kai plus your graduation thesis. But about for the students who really seriously commit, about half of their total work and learning takes place in, in, the, in the research group. And 90% of their growing up takes place in the group because you have to learn to define a problem, um, take responsibility for solving the problem. And that includes building your own skills as, as you do it, as well as uh, learning what sorts of resources you need, um, learning, the, learning how you actually go about managing a problem end to end, committing to it from the beginning, finding a solution, uh, executing on the solution, and then presenting your results and controlling the whole thing end to end. So it's really a fantastic system in, from my point of view. It's also very, very, um, I think, very 21st century oriented. So when it's convenient to learn classroom basic topics online, then go do it online. And when it's more convenient to learn them in classes at SFC, then learn them in the classes at, at SFC. 
So we uh, we operate in a, in a um, in a very open fashion in that sense, but the core of it is that interaction between the faculty and the students. So I spend ten or fifteen hours a week in when FaceTime with students, which is an extraordinarily high ra uh, ratio compared to faculty at most uh, other top universities throughout the world. It's this kink you kai or the interaction between the students and the faculty is really the core of what we're doing, and I just love the system. So let's see, um, we do have, it, it is possible to finish instead of in four years to finish in three and a half or to do what we call the three plus one program which is both the bachelor's and master's degree in, uh, in uh, four years. Let me go on from here and skip that a little bit. Let's see. So some of the topics that we are interested in, we have 120 or 30 faculty at our campus. These are some of the areas they are interested in. Let's see, is my own quantum computing even on here? Even my own quantum computing doesn't seem to have, yes, it's there on the, on the lower left, uh, uh, over there in the left-hand corner of the, uh, the slide there. So overall, this is very interdisciplinary and is very issue-oriented and it's ultimately also a very project-oriented uh, system. So research topics. These are just a few of the ones from, from our campus. Um, Self-driving vehicles, we are working on. Various aspects of AI. Uh, 3D printers, which we call more generally personal fabrication. There are other technologies beside 3D printers involved. Drones and autonomous aircraft and things like that. And now would be a good opportunity to get Shaimei to tell us a little bit about what he's doing. Shaimei, why don't you tell us what you're working on? Sure, all right. Um, so just a little bit. Uh, so just a little bit of history so that it becomes a bit uh, easier to understand as to what I'm doing is that when I was in high school, I sort of, I was really, um, I was obsessed with football, the sport. And um, so I sort of chose Keio University because of its, well, as uh, Professor Rod said, because uh, of its build your own curriculum kind of thing, because I wanted to do uh, football analytics. So football and combine that with data analytics and sort of AI and machine learning and things like that and sort of do, do something out of that. And there's no sort of conventional degree that allow you to do that. There's computer science degrees, there's, well, there's sports degrees, but there's nothing where you can combine both. And so Keio was a pretty cool uh, place to come to. And so in my first year, I think I joined a, joined something completely different to what I wanted to do, which was an economics, uh, uh, economics research seminar, which is not listed in this, but there's a few economics research, uh, economics based research seminars, right? And then in my second year, I joined Professor Rod's um, quantum computing um, seminar. And uh, while, while I was doing that, I was also in this uh, business management seminar where we sort of, um, uh, where the professor, he's sort of an ex-McKinsey sort of, uh, ex-McKinsey, uh, oh, ex-McKinsey, ex-Harvard business school sort of uh, professor. And he, so he, his whole idea is that uh, it is to sort of uh, help us in uh, creating businesses for the 21st century. And so there's a lot of case study discussions. There's a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of companies that come into our seminar. So for example, we've, uh, we've had uh, companies like DNA, we've had companies like Rakuten um, come into our seminar and uh, sort of commission us to do projects for them among a lot of other companies. Sony is coming, Panasonic is coming and things like that. So we have uh, co contact with companies from different industries, different, well, Japanese companies, but also global companies from different industries, from different sort of walks of uh, different areas. And so that's the current uh, research seminar I'm in. But my personal research, which going, going back to what I wanted to do with uh, sports analytics is outside of SFC, right? And so the good thing about SFC is, is that since it's, you can build your own curriculum, you can also build your curriculum in a way that you have time outside of the university. And so currently I work um, at a sports analytics company where I'm analyzing data for football for J League matches, which is the Japanese Football League, and I'm sort of creating models and things like that for that. So this is this is completely outside of the university, but I'm using insights that I gained from there in my university work in in the business seminar that I'm in. And I'm also current. I'm, I've also worked at a robotics startup um, in, in my second year, and so a lot of uh, a lot of things sort of connected between the university and the robotics startup. Uh, the good thing about SFC is that it also has an incubation center. I'm not sure if that's in the slides, but no, I'll just not not in this set. Oh yeah, I'll just I'll just mention I'll just mention it in passing. Then there's a there's a sort of a startup incubation center located like not even a minute away from SFC, where a lot of professors and a lot of students have startups. And so I was working at one of those uh, startups where we we're creating a last mile delivery solutions robot, 
which is again, which is not this is something that I hadn't envisioned doing when I was in high school. But then again, when I well come to SFC, all of these things have sort of come together, and well, they've brought me where well as just a well, cross point of a lot of different fields, I guess. So yeah. So that's very cool. That's good. So let me show you just a little bit of a couple of things. I'll let me skip forward here to, to sort of uh, bring together a couple of ideas that Shai May mentioned. Um, one of them is uh, if you're in, if you're familiar with baseball, for example, one of our one of our own students is an is a baseball pitcher with an unusual kind of pitch, and in fact, one of the professors studies the biomechanics of sports. And so uh, he's actually worked with, with him to actually study that. So it gives you kind of an idea, again, of the interdisciplinary things that have been going on. Um, someone asked about arts in one of the earlier presentations. We do a lot of digital arts at our campus. And in fact, this is a, an award that was given by to uh, one of our own students in a, uh, in a research or in a, uh, a conference that uh, she attended uh, some years ago. And in my group, as I mentioned, we do quantum computing and quantum networking. And this is what you're seeing here. Let's see, is the animation working? Yeah, the animation is running. I don't know how well you all can see it, but, it, but it, the, the details aren't important. This is a simulator for the quantum internet. And the guy in the upper right is one of my undergraduate students. And he is currently the primary maintainer for this. And this is also a available open source on the internet. If you're interested in, in a, you can find the, the link for where our uh, work is actually taking place. So um, you can see that undergraduate students get to be involved in a lot of really fascinating projects on both the inside and outside. Um, another one, for example, from my own group is a student who actually worked on a system that allow that works with cars that can, can communicate with each other to improve safety uh, on the road, which brings us back to this topic we started with a little while ago on how, for example, autonomous cars can work. So as Shaime said, there are a lot of opportunities outside of campus. It's what I refer to as multimodal learning. And I can give you an entire half hour or hours talk about what it means to do multimodal learning, but it means being involved in internships as well as with companies outside. Um, you can become a member of the technical staff at a major international trade show, for example. You can travel with faculty. Um, I take students with me to uh, to international conferences and to places like Okinawa, the big picture there in the lower left. So there are a lot of opportunities here. Let me finish up just quickly with how to apply to the, to a, the GIGA program itself. Um, there is no need to come to Japan for the application process. There are no SFC specific written tests, but if you have standardized test scores, we very much like to see those. They really help us to evaluate the students. Um, there is no firm requirement that you must submit um, written test scores because we get applicants from all around the world and not everyone has access to the same set of tests. And so we wanted that to be fair and available. Um, there is no actual interview process that's actually required for this, but you are expected to submit a three minute um, self-introductory video as part of your application process. And um, let's see, there's no official cutoff minimum for the scores and things of that. And let's see, so the final thing, applications for this fall, if you are graduating from high school soon and you want to come to SFC to join us this September, the deadline is in, is uh, I believe February 5th for, for submission of the online portion. And then the paper documents need to arrive in our offices by February 12th. So it's coming up rapidly if you're interested. You know, time, time to get on the stick there and get it done. And with that, I will finish up uh, right here. And I'm sure there are a number of questions. Thank you very much, Professor Rodney, for such an interesting presentation. And uh, knowing about uh, such unique curriculum of KU University is a very new experience even for me. So uh, it's very good to know about uh, the education program of KU University, that how uh, out of the box uh, and a very unique uh, way of uh, treating courses and subjects are being done in KU University. So there are certain questions uh, that uh, students have been asking. So uh, would you like to pick the question by yourself or would you like me to select some of the questions? 
Let's see. So what's open here? I think Mina Moltosan has probably been um, answering some of these questions as we go. Uh, so yes. Somebody's interested in the uh, um, uh, tuition fees and things of that and things of that nature. So let's see. So the cost is about twelve thousand U.S. dollars. I don't have that converted into uh, rupees here. Um, I, I would. I think that's that translates to about. I don't know. It, it, this, but like about nine lakh rupees. I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'm through there. That's the tuition alone. Um, we are outside of central Tokyo, but we're still in the Tokyo area, and so 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 living costs are sort of intermediate compared to some of the other places um, in uh, Japan. Um, there are also scholarships. There are a few scholarships that are available specifically for students who are applying to to, to the uh, to the uh, Giga program that are provided by our own alumni. Um, Mr. Kobayashi is one of the founders of. Uh, the company uh, Rakuten, which is um, one of Japan's biggest e-commerce companies. And students are also el eligible for the same next scholarships that were actually mentioned earlier during the, during the Kyoto presentation. Um, and again, the best route for those is actually through the, uh, through the embassy. But in order to, to be eligible for those through the embassy, you have to start about 18 months before um, you would enter as a student. So if you are in your next to last year of high school, you need to contact the Japanese embassy in Delhi now to find out how, how, how to, uh, to become eligible for those. Um, the number of those scholarships that are available is small, but they are really excellent if you get them. So I really encourage you to apply. Apart from these scholarships, I think there's a lot more scholarships available um, from the Mitakai, as well, from the, the, alum, uh, the other alumni. Mm -hmm. And also Jasso as well. Oh yeah, over here, Jasso. And I think in the past few years, a lot of companies have also sort of um, sponsored a few students. And so if you're an international student, um, more often than not, you will end up with a scholarship is what I think, is what I've experienced as well. But okay, I think someone, um, I was looking at the Q&A and someone talked about um, being a resident or a dependent in Japan. And then um, I think... So I think that this applies to all universities, but uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mina Motosan as well, um, is that if you're, if you're anything but a student in your visa, uh, you do not, uh, you're not eligible for a lot of scholarships that international students are eligible for, because then you're grouped in with a lot of other Japanese students. And then um, I, think, I think that's a whole different uh, case altogether. So I, but regardless, uh, you do get scholarships. Mm -hmm. And um, true, there, there are also some of the scholarships are awarded at the time of admission. Yeah. And then there are a number of other scholarships that become available to you in, in your second year and beyond once you're an admitted uh, student who's, al who's already on campus. Um, Mina Moltosan and the, the campus staff can answer a lot of questions about those for which, which specific ones you're, you're eligible for and which ones you aren't. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, the specific question about the Matsuhisa Laboratory. I don't know Matsuhisa Laboratory at uh, Kiyoshi. Um, <clears throat> the, uh... I think a lot of people had questions about how to contact professors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, there's been a suggestion to contact professors, particularly for graduate school at our campus. In fact, your relationship with the potential advisor is in fact critical. It's the most important thing. But I can tell you that Japanese professors in general, and I'll include myself in Japanese professors in this, we are terrible about answering email because we get hundreds of email messages every day. And many of them, many of them just don't get seen. And many of the others we go, oh yes, that's important. I need to answer that. But it gets put on the stack of things to answer and not done. Um, some professors, it's easy to find their secretary's email address. Many of them, it's not. And uh, so, so that sort of... Uh, changes how easy it is or isn't. But most professors don't mind if you send them email two or three times over, you know, over a three or four week span and say, you know, look, I'm really interested. I'd really like to, to actually discuss this with you. Um, most of the professors don't mind. And sooner or later, you're likely to actually get an answer from them. Um, if you don't, you know, our apologies, it's, it's very rarely anything to do, to do with you. It's almost always just the, the fact that we're overwhelmed with work on our side. But you know, the, on the upside, as I said, at our campus, once you're on our campus, then the face-to-face -face interaction with the faculty is the best in the world. 
A few questions about SAT and TOEFL. Um, you don't need it, but as Professor Rod said, it's recommended that if you do, if you've if you've taken the test, then you might as well submit the scores. Actually, so I said you don't have to have standardized test scores, but Nina Moltisan can correct me on this if I'm wrong. But if your high school education was not in English, I believe you have to submit some sort of certified English test score. Is that right, Nina Moltisan? That's right. That's right. Okay. Hmm. okay. Uh, I think uh, from the common questions uh, that we have been encountering over the webinars, uh, there is one point that I would like to add uh, that the education system in India and education system in other countries, uh, they have a different structures, uh, structure. For example, uh, the education in the school in arts may be uh, a student may be studying uh, in the uh, in the school of uh, graduate school of environment in the other countries so the restriction is not uh, related to the names for example i know many students uh, who are who have studied uh, physics chemistry mathematics uh, and are now uh, studying in the graduate school of social sciences and humanities Okay, uh, so the, uh, the basic idea is that students should understand that the education structure is different. So you may be finding your subject of interest in a different stream with different name. Uh, so please try to explore the website of the universities and try to see the subject of your interest. Uh, you will find it um, in a different graduate school that, uh, that you can find in India. So that is a very important point for students to know. Yes, that's true. So one sort of extreme example is that in fact in uh, KO, for example, that um, certain aspects of neuroscience are in fact in the faculty of uh, literature, I believe, um, which is sort of strange. But I think that I think the chain of reasoning is that part. So social sciences in general are underneath what's called the faculty of literature and under social sciences includes psychology. And one aspect of psychology is, is some aspects of neuroscience. So sometimes there's, there are things end up in sort of strange places. But you know, in our campus in particular, we are very, we are highly interdisciplinary as I've said in, uh, uh, on uh, you know, a couple of times uh, so far. And so you know, you'll find there, there are plenty of gaps and things that we don't do, but there are plenty of things in our campus that, that, that very interesting faculty do. And we care more about your general ability than your background. Okay, so thank you very much, Professor Rodney and Mr. Shah for your valuable insights and uh, for your help and uh, coordination in the various Q&A session. I would also add one more point uh, from the, my experience of uh, uh, attending and uh, facilitating all these webinars. Uh, that the admissions uh, in Japan are spe mostly specific to the universities and their own programs. So uh, it is quite different from India when, where there are certain centralized examinations like uh, JE and uh, NEET and other exams. So you have to, uh, the university do not have say in the admission, but in Japan, uh, universities conduct their own admission, their own programs. So please follow the university's websites and uh, see the requirements and uh, you'll get most of the qu your questions answered from the websites. So- And, uh, and the links for, for our programs, by the way, have, were put into the chat by uh, Mr. Minamoto while, while we were talking here. Thank you all for your, for your time this evening and I hope to see you all at SFC. Thank you very much, Mr. Shah, for your uh, for sharing the information. And I, I think uh, that brings us to the end of today's webinar. So thank you very much for sticking with us till the end. Today we had presentation from three of the top universities in Japan. They gave us a very comprehensive insight into the education system and admission procedure, uh, procedure along with the campus life, beautiful landscape of Japan, and the various career opportunities. So we will have many more sessions with different programs coming up. Uh, so please stay tuned and keep visiting the website of University of Tokyo India office for the upcoming sessions. And I would also like to add that the, uh, that the recordings of the webinars can also be found in the University of Tokyo India office. And uh, I'm sure you can find uh, some important information in the uh, webinars you might have missed. So thank you very much and uh, take care. <laughs>